Hey, what's up everybody? Aubrey Trades here with another weekly trade recap. We're gonna go over the biggest losers and winners from the past week and see what I did right, what I did wrong, how I can improve. So, getting right into it, I'm gonna go into the dashboard, see our recent performance. I, you know, it looks good. Uh, less uh, commissions and fees though. It's actually about a scratch of a week. You know, going from uh, two, uh, 6649 to 6643. Uh, so, you know, slightly down. Um, I'm gonna call it a scratch. Better performance overall, so I'm not gonna be mad. I'll take it. Uh, if we go into the trades view, and we'll go right into filtering out Monday to Friday, And we'll exit out of the tags. Here we go. So, biggest winners and losers. Winners, IMTL, breaking news play, uh, breakout buy to new highs, and exiting when I kept seeing someone throwing lots of size on uh, 31. And, um, you know, we had tested it here, had this dip, the seller returned, and I'm like, let me take the safe exit while they're still buying beneath me. And maybe I can get out here where this guy's throwing the offer up. Now we did end up spiking up to 32, but I'm not mad. I felt like I saw the momentum shift happening and I was like, let me take the quick win, nice and easy. Uh, but that did end up using all of my capital and there was a beautiful AHFD um, VWAP hold swizzle setup that I didn't get to participate in because I didn't have enough capital. So in reality, should have left it alone. AHFD, next biggest win, $61. Um, I did fumble. This was a reversal long into continuation. I had outlined it the night before, but I fumbled the entry. Bought right as we reclaimed VWAP. Recurring theme. I can always stand to wait for more market structure to develop, all right? The safer thing to do, we had higher low here, but wait for more higher lows. Get in on the higher lows. Wait for this, okay, we're back above VWAP, great. Ears are perking up, this might be a good, this might be a good trade. Observe, right? Here we get this pullback where I stopped out. But when it came back up, I would have known, okay, there's another higher low. I could have set a lure, like a like a limit buy, right? Going fishing and set it at, you know, five, four, five, five, and try and got, I probably would have gotten a fill over these next few minutes before the move happened. And then I would have been better positioned. I would have had better risk reward. because all of a sudden I can risk off of this low here at five, four. That would have been the move. And I would have saved myself the headache of sitting through this loss. Cause the last thing I want to do is get is get caught in another, you know, hundred and twenty, hundred and seventy-five dollar OTC loss. It's just no. Can't do it, won't do it. Uh, so there you go. I stopped myself out prematurely. Re-entered after it became obvious that the trade was gonna work, which again. That's what I should do. Wait till it's obvious. And obvious would have been around here. But, you know. Keep that in mind as I go into the next week. Next trade, another AHFD trade, which was buying a morning spike. And it happened to work out. I grabbed such a small piece of it. I'm really honestly, like, not too happy about that, like that's a clear chase to me. The better thing to do would have been wait uh, for 510. Again, 945 rule is here. And now you, you're looking at potentially taking advantage of this test of new highs. You kind of get here, you base for a little bit, shows you that there's buying happening, and then you can grab this 5455 five, to 58, you know, or 57. Maybe, and even that, that doesn't seem like that much or that great either, does it? So, moving on. Next one is 
MWWC where we were it was that VWAP hold pattern again kind of jumped the gun on the entry you know my ears were perking up here oh this is bullish but again bottom of the range try and get in on the bottom of the range you can usually stand to wait for another pullback here my spidey senses are tingling take a second wait right you can draw a channel line here and and in this case you know we would have broken the channel but as we started to reclaim now you can take your long and you can risk off of this right and then you can grab this piece of the move and that would have ended up being a more profitable trade than buying here at the top at like, you know, 139 or something and selling at 142. Moving on to the biggest losers. We got ALYI, which was VWAP hold, but you know, it's a chase. I'm buying too far up into the continuation move. It's um, midday, you know. Midday is not as reliable. It's more choppy. Shouldn't have made this. Should have, you know, had more patience. Waited until the end of the day, and by then I would have seen that this had given up a lot of its move, and I could have just avoided this all together. The uh, VNTH breaking news play was buying for a retest of this uh, low. You know, the penny break. Um, I did like that. I didn't just buy. This was spiking up here. At the time, I threw a limit by at 9.6 to give myself some cushion, got filled, had a few minutes where I could have flipped this for a small, small gain. So my en my entry, love it, you know? I didn't just buy the offer, I threw my limit in. So I gotta always do that. Um, but I should have just taken the small win. I was hoping for the break of one. Uh, when this started clocking lower highs, you know, should have been enough for me to know it was over. I stopped myself out here because that seemed like um, that was that was the range, and I saved myself a lot of heartache. But again, should have taken it more scalpy. Shouldn't uh, sh probably shouldn't have taken the trade. Should have sat on my hands, waited around, and then I would have I could have had a better day. Probably would have had an officially green week had I not taken this trade and had I not jumped the gun on the AHFD reversal long. But such is the way she goes. MJWL, again, I missed the move, uh, so I wanted to buy for the continuation when really, at that point, it's a chase and it's I gotta be thinking more, let me position myself if I can get in on a dip, a momentary panic into the close, because profit taking, right? And then I can potentially set myself to sell the next day after to, you know, reopen near these highs or maybe a gap up even, right? That would have been the better thought. Instead, I let myself get stopped out because I was risking this low when really the more, like the better thing to risk, you know you're wrong, is here this lower high. This is kind of an arbitrary. If it was going to show strength for sure, then it would have held the, this would have held up. So, but again, the move happened, it's extended, you're chasing. Like just don't. Just don't. Prague and then we'll wrap it up. This was a trend break. I'm not that mad at this one. Um I got in, we had a higher low, firm double bottom here. Right, this wick was uh, was what I'm thinking the higher low because of the wick, but but you saw this uh, spike happening on the tape in level two at this level, uh, but I added because I was looking for the retest of the 230s and with the stop here and I got stopped out is what it is. Um, I kind of you know looking back I wish I would have taken the easy quick win, but I was trying to set myself up for something better. And this was after missing Prague. There was, there was a couple Prague trades that I didn't capitalize on fully. Here, look at this. A consolidation break, and I took just a few cents when it ended up pushing 195. <laughs> like, oh my God. This is the pattern though. This is the one. This is the one. 
you get in here, you risk this, uh, you risk this level, 160. You're at 165, five cent risk. And this pushes up to 195. Come on. That's like 6R or something. Crazy. Like these are the trades I need to not, I need to not fumble. And that's that's such a clean, clean chart too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Um, what am I gonna take into the next week? Uh, probably one, knowing that I can always afford to be more patient. Just because my ears perk up to a potential long doesn't mean that that is necessarily the best time to enter. More often than not, there is another pullback which would make for a better entry zone and would allow me to improve my risk reward ratio on the trade. Second thing I wanted to take into the next week is I really need to continue working on not trading midday, not just sitting on my hands. So everything really comes down to patience and discipline again, right? Um, but I, I will say, just to have some positivity in here, VWAP hold, trend break, VWAP hold, VWAP hold, VWAP hold, right? I, I like that I'm getting my, more consistency in the patterns that I'm trading, right? There's not as much randomness in these. So I'm doing, I, it is an improvement, but I got to keep it up. I got to really know to wait longer you know i want to get in perfect world get in right at the momentum shift to catch those big moves and then rely on my system to tell me the exit signal right um if this would want to load a chart i can show you like say you're here and you're in on the high of daybreak, right? And you're smart and you're getting in on this pullback in nine twos. Man, what a run. And then you just wait until this, until you close underneath and you're out at 132. Sure, you left a lot on this table. Sure, maybe a smart trader would have seen this as like a topping tail and then gotten out at 134. Or maybe even just known 147 was pretty extended and you were coming into long-term resistance. But this gives would give me the confidence in the, to hold through these moves, wait for it to make that consolidation pattern, make its way back towards the moving average lines instead of just putzing it. I mean, the thing on Prague I showed you is the equivalent of like entering here for the high of daybreak and then selling here, right? I mean, when there's so much more to take, I just gotta keep that in mind. The patience, right? What does it matter? Why do I care about getting in here, right? When it first tests the high of day and then I gotta sit through this stress. Just give it some more time. Once you're, once you have an inkling, an inkling is just that it's an inkling. It doesn't mean it's your entry signal. It just means you've potentially identified a good trade. You've potentially identified the start of a momentum shift. Keep it on watch. Wait, you're more than likely going to get a dip to get in on. And that's going to play a huge role in turning around my equity curve. So um, that's all I got for you today. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments down below what you're doing to improve your trading. Or if you got some tickers that you want some TA on, drop those names down below and I'll throw them on the next video. Thanks again for watching Amabri Trades. Be safe out there. I'll see you in the next video.